Hello and welcome to Defence Line, a weekly program on defence, security and more. I am Kamar Sandhu. In this episode of Defence Line, we will discuss the continuing standoff between India and Pakistan on the Sachin Glacier and the possible impact of this on the environment in what is known as the Pamir Knot consisting of the six mountain ranges. Even the former Pakistan President General Pervez Musharraf has stated that before we try and settle the Kashmir issue, Sachin Glacier dispute needs to be resolved. How should this dispute be resolved and should the two armies pave way for a peace park on the glacial heights? We will discuss this and more with Lieutenant General P. N. Hoon, former Army Commander, Professor S. K. Sharma, former member National Security Advisory Board, Brigadier H. P. S. Bedi, uh, former Brigade Commander Siachin, V. K. Raina, former Deputy Director General of Geological Survey. Welcome to the studio. But before we jump into the discussion, let us take a look at this most chilling border in the world. Siachen Glacier is an icy patch between NJ980420 and the border with China in the Karakoram mountain range. The area lies in the heart of the Pamir Knot, consisting of six mountain ranges to the north and northwest, being the Pamirs and the Hindukush mountain ranges. To the northeast lie the Kunlun and the Karakoram ranges, and south of it being the Great Himalayas and the Pir Panjal mountain ranges. Siachen Glacier is the source of the Nubra River, which joins with the Shayok River to join the Indus. History of the dispute can be traced to the 1948 Karachi Agreement. Its signatories agreed that the line of control delineated in 1972 from a point NJ9842 would extend north to the glaciers. The dispute is over the interpretation of the alignment of the LOC beyond NJ9842. Whether north to the glaciers means a magnetic north, a grid north or along the northward watershed. After India learned that Pakistan was trying to occupy Siachen, India preempted it in April 1984 and captured Saltaro Range. This put India at a tremendous advantage, besides it prevented Pakistan from using the two passes. Since then, a solution has been attempted many a time but without success. The result is that a brigade plus strength, each of both armies is staying put in this most chilling border in the world where there are more casualties to frostbite, avalanches and respiratory diseases than to actual fighting. We will be in conversation with General Hoon, Professor Sharma, Brigadier Bedi and Mr. Raina. I will start with you General Hoon. Uh, when you were the Corps Commander and uh, Mrs. Gandhi decided to uh, ask you to occupy the, the glacier uh, at that point of time. I think this was April 1984. Right. General Hoon, uh, now uh, with the benefit of hindsight, do you uh, even now feel that the area is strategically and tactically uh, important for India? Uh, it is not a question, uh, Kamaji, that uh, it is strategically important today. It was very important even in 84. Pakistan was sending its patrols. Helicopter landings had taken place when I took over as the corps commander there. We had proof that they are uh, uh, clearing expeditions to the area. So they were going to occupy it. So at that time it was decided after uh, I had approached, uh, I, I don't think I uh, approached anyone, but uh, Indraji was uh, on a trip and I had a meeting with her and I told her this is strategic. She came three, four times and then we hatched out a plan. Now that plan at that time was very important as has been proved today. It's very important because that time China had built the Aksai Chin highway through uh, uh, our area, line of control and uh, uh, west of uh, Hanle, Fukche, that line. And it, uh, that road started being built at that time, going right round India like, uh, like so a road round So you kind of preempted Pakistan from, uh, from occupying the area? No, sir. They would not have occupied it at that time, I was very sure. The yes. NJ9842 was not in 1982. Uh, it was signed by General Bhagat. Yes, 72. 72. After, after the 71 war in the Simla Agreement. Right. So the dispute has been that whereas clearly it states that a line then runs northwards, they were trying to take this line northeastwards, yeah, the right, uh, right away. 
So we had to do something at that time and I think events have proved it. Absolutely. Now, uh, uh, Brigade Bedi, you have been uh, on the glacier, you commanded the brigade there. Uh, when you were there and commanding the brigade, did you get a sense of uh, the, uh, the military importance of this region? Uh, yes, uh, definitely as the general has said that uh, the glacier is very, very important to us and uh, by the action that we took in 84, we are now in a position of strength and we are dominating and that is uh, what is actually irking Pakistan. Right. Now, when you were there, did you get a sense, you get a sense that uh, Pakistan is very keen to offset the kind of advantage that India today enjoys uh, on the glacier? Uh, yes, uh, uh, that is why I think this misadventure in Kargil is related to that, as my my view. And um, they, they are keen, but uh, over a period of time, I think they have also realized the futility of coming up on that side, because if they come up there, uh, presently with our position, they are very little to gain. But how often did you uh, have to kind of uh, engage in, uh, in a, in a uh, fight? Oh, uh, till the ceasefire came into effect, uh, it was almost daily. Now, uh, Professor Sharma, what is your uh, uh, take? I mean, you know, this is often stated that this is a place where not a glade of grass glow, uh, grows and uh, fighting uh, over the glacier is like uh, two, uh, uh, two bald men uh, fighting for a comb. I mean, it has often been stated. So, what is your take no, on no, it? It is strategically very, very important. And uh, in case uh, we, we vacate that particular position and Pakistan comes there, it will be very, it will be just like Kargil. So, from that point of view, I think it is very important uh, because this is a very strategic area. But you would agree that we need to do something about it, some kind of a settlement because you see, look at the people dying because of frostbite, look at the people getting injured and uh, also uh, a lot of people have perished in avalanches. So, uh, something needs to be done, you know, no? Unless our strategic interests are uh, clear, I don't think uh, that uh, such things uh, we have to be in mind. Uh, Mr. Vena, now uh, as an expert on the on the glaciers, I want to uh, check with you. Recently, the U.S. Special Envoy to the Afghanistan-Pakistan region, uh, Richard Holbrook, he said that the encampment of Indian and Pakistan troops on the uh, uh, glacier is leading to the melting of the ice and this could flood the rivers uh, which uh, come from there. Now, this is not based on scientific fact. This is just to pressurize government of India. I don't think, you see, you must visualize an glacier. Say, for example, even if you take Siachen Glacier, which is almost 74 kilometers long, and the ice near the snout, I can tell you, is about 10,000 years old. And during this period, this ice has passed through the turbulence of 10,000 years. It doesn't get affected by one soldier going there or one brigade going there. I agree. Uh, that environmentally you can say because when people live there, they leave some rubbish there which is not good or proper. That, that aspect is okay. But to imagine just because people are living there, the glacier is going to melt and then it is going to flood. Glaciers contribute less than 30 percent of water to the rivers in the Himalayas. Maximum material water comes from winter snow and ground penetration. Glaciers don't contribute much. So, it's much. Just, a, just a statement is, as you, you said. just a statement. As, as, as IPCC did and then they had to withdraw. General Hoon, uh, uh, before we talk of a solution, uh, I want to uh, ask you about the fears that Pakistan has that with uh, India sitting on the Siachen Glacier, perhaps their northern areas uh, would be threatened. Is, are those fears correct? No, sir. Those fears are not correct. The main thing is that there was a blade of grass someone has mentioned also then does not grow. That was the same thing that was told in, uh, uh, on the excise chain. But the parliament has taken a vow that every inch of our territory will be taken. Okay, that's one. Our plans, unfortunately, have not been put through. And there's a flaw. Very quickly, I'll take one minute. There's a flaw in our planning, whether it's at the national security level or whether it's the army level or whether it's the political level. No, but, but that is fine, General. No, I'm my my, my so question here is that did we at any point of time have an offensive plan in mind? Uh, I'm giving we? you. I'm giving you the offensive plan. So that means the Pakistan fears are correct? Oh, of course they are correct. Now I'll tell you how, what is, I'll uh, no, that dwell is on three things. They would have attacked. No, no, now I'll tell you. They will. Please, sir, give me one, if yes. there is yes. time. Give me one minute. This was our plan. Now the whole core has been pushed into Ladakh. Bad. I still say, pull them back. Now what has happened? The Chinese have come. 
and they have got 1100 uh, 11000 troops in the area of gilgit and skardu what are they doing there now they are going to hit yes, you we through we've had some reports on this may yes, i finish yes yes, yes. 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 Now they are thinking they'll hit. They, I am thinking they'll hit us through Brazil Pass and cut off the whole of uh, uh, the part of that Zojila as also Kargil, and they will make a little Tibet there. Please, it's going to happen now. Talks. What was the Pakistan claiming? First round of talks. We took maps uh, of one inch. We had talks. S K Singh. Yes. And Pakistan had a map. And before we started, I said, I'd like to say something. Their map was not a map. That area was not even map. It was a sketch. So I told them that you are trying to... This was the 1989 when the talks were taking yeah, place. I, but, but I thought we nearly reached an agreement at that time. No, that's a very good thing that whenever you don't reach an agreement, you say that, yes, uh, we have met, <laughs> we have discussed, we have had good talks and we will meet another day. So it's a very serious situation as it, they, uh, may I also just touch what the, how we can get through it today? I have already... Uh, we'll, we'll come it. back to that. Okay. You know, now, Brigadier okay. Devi, I want to uh, come to you. Now, when you were uh, posted there, I learned that you had uh, talked of demilitarization. I think you presented a paper. Uh, uh, what exactly was that uh, plan? Uh, sir, I, uh, as what General Hoon has said, he's talked about a plan in general. But I personally feel that uh, no attempt is uh, in fact I won't say no attempt but an attempt from the Sachin Glacier side uh, from Pakistan is very unlikely because of the terrain yeah. and as I mentioned earlier uh, now he also brought out these points that there was a plan for de-induction and reducing the troops yes but unfortunately what has happened is that this aspect has not been looked into and I seriously thought and I still feel that the 84 deployment which was for various reasons needs to be relooked, and therefore there is a lot of scope for pulling back certain troops for reasons one that we have better surveillance facilities today we have more uh, you know means of transport we've got better facilities and better places where we can have our troops which are acclimatized and can go in for a quick reaction so you mean uh, uh, demilitarization is possible should it be unilateral or should it be from both sides no no it has to be from both sides you see and uh, as i mentioned that uh, there has to be a certain kind of confidence building measures between the two we should be as has been brought out earlier that there was a talk about having physical demarcation lines which pakistanis never agreed but now since we are in a position of advantage there uh, so even on the bargaining table uh, you know then what should be the, the nature of talks yes uh, that is one thing i uh, i very strongly feel that we are in a position of strength and hence i think we should initiate certain kind of confidence building measures which should give the confidence to them that yes what we are doing what we are Professor to Sharma, would you uh, yeah, leave it the no, brigade? The problem is here, you see this area is such that neither the UAVs or the sensors, you see, will be very useful because the amount of uh, the snow cover which comes in. So it will be very difficult uh, that if there has to be a quick reaction and the things are going wrong from my particular point of view, I think there will be some particular difficulty. So you are not in favor of starting uh, these confidence building measures and uh, you know talking mm -hmm. of demilitarization? Not, uh, uni not unilaterally, unless we know that uh, we are able to checkmate them, it will not be in the interest. And uh, that's Mr. Lena, uh, you know since you have uh, been there, the, no, I think no. you were the first time you went there was 1958 in the geological that's survey. Right. As he said, see the, something is fishy, why doesn't Pakistan agree and accept? that our troops are here, Indian troops are here. Yeah. That's what we are saying. Let's put a line. Once on a map they accept, yes, this is India troops, this is Pakistani troops. Then when we withdraw also, if they come back, we know, we have said, but this was the line. It, they are not agreeing. They are saying, no, you withdraw, we withdraw, but we will not accept any I line, which gives you an idea. Add to this.